قتل حسین سلم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ومولانا رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن والاه اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما أغلق والخاتم لما سبق ناصر الحق بالحق والهادي إلى صراطك المستقيم وعلى آله حق قدره ومقداره العظيم أما بعد الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا أهل بيت رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا ساداتنا علي بن أبي طالب الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدتنا فاطمة الزهراء الصلاة والسلام عليكما يا سيدا شباب أهل الجنة يا مولانا الحسن ومولانا الحسين الصلاة والسلام عليكم يا أهل بيت رسول الله اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد أما بعد I greet you all with the greetings of peace السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Brothers and sisters in Islam Honorable ulama and guests of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there is a reason I started by greeting our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Mawla Ali and Sayyida Fatima and the two Imams Hassan and Hussein and that is because our Mashaykh and our awliya Kiram mention that when the story of Imam Hussein is related, they are all present to listen to it. This is the story of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's family. Tanat Khan was reciting earlier beautiful poems and he was saying, Ya Hussein, Ya Hussein, he was repeating the name of Sayyidina Al Hussein. And I hope all of us were loving and enjoying listening to those words, Ya Hussein, because that is a name that our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to enjoy listening to. That is a name our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam enjoy calling upon. If you had to go to Rasulullah's house in Medina, where we go for Hajj and make ziyara in Medina, if you had to go to that house 1400 years ago, you know, you know what you would hear from that house? Ya Hassan, Ya Hussein, Ya Fatima, Ya Ali. And the answer would also be heard, Ya Rasulallah, Ya Rasulallah, Ya Rasulallah, Ya Rasulallah. These naras, these calls are coming directly from the household of the Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is not an exaggeration, this is a fact. Sahaba Ikiram would go to our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's house and they hear him calling upon his beloved grandsons, Ya Hassan. Ya Hussein, these words were on the tips of his tongue, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And no words were more sweeter to him than the names of his two beloved grandsons. He used to carry them, he used to kiss them, he used to hug them. An Arab came one day, an Arab from the desert, a Bedouin. And the Bedouins are known to be rough people with no love in their hearts. They, they are, their hearts are like stones, they have no feelings. He came. And he saw the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam carrying two children in his lap. Hassan and Hussein. Iski god mein pale bade. Who raised them up? Today we brag about Mera Murshad, Mera Peer. My Sheikh is this man, my Sheikh is that man. And may Allah bless all our Sheikhs and preserve them. But Hassan and Hussein, their Murshad and their Peer and their Sheikh was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Directly, they received this deen directly 
from Rasulullah sallallahu Imam Hussain used to say, you people when you talk about the deen, you say you heard from this man, who heard from that man. We say we heard from our Nana sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who heard from Jibreel. One day they were mentioning in front of Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq, he's the great grandson of Imam Hussain. They were arguing about the masala, some masala of fiqh, and somebody said, uh, this is the opinion, and this is my opinion, this narration, and that narration. You know, ulama have ikhtilaf, there's no problem with that. Then finally they looked at him, they said, do you have anything to say? So Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq, and he's one of those stars of Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik. Imam Malik said, I never saw that man in the day except that he was fasting and in the night except that he was praying. Some people think Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq only belongs to the Shia sect. They may have whatever relationship they have, but he is the Imam of all the Muslims. We all love him, we all honor him. The Ahlul Bayt don't belong to one group. Do not let anybody convince you of that. But the essence of Sunnah, we are Ahlul Sunnah. It is Sunnah to love the Ahlul Bayt. We are Ahlul Sunnah, and the greatest of the Sunnahs is to love the Ahlul Bayt. If you want an Ahlul Sunnah that is devoid of loving Ahlul Bayt, then you are Ahlul Bidah, not Ahlul Sunnah. Because Sunnah is to love them. So they ask Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq, and Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq, he says, they ask him, what is your opinion on this masala? He said, I have no opinion. I don't have any opinion on this masala. Whatever the masala was, he said, but I can narrate to you what I heard from my father, Imam Muhammad al-Baqir, who, what he heard from his father, Imam Zainul Abidin, what he heard from his father, Imam Hussein shaheed karbala what he heard from his father, Mawlai Kainat, Mawla Ali Mushkil Kusha, who, what he heard from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what he heard from Jibreel, what he heard from Allah. You want that? So they said, before he can even narrate the hadith, everybody in the gathering went in a hall and they started crying and they started screaming. Before he can mention to them, he said, that is what we have. We don't have the opinions of people. This is what we have. This is what we got from our forefathers. Al-Ubaytin Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imam Hassan and Hussein, I go back to my point. He was holding the two children and, and this Bedouin comes to visit him. Salaam alaykum alaykum as salam and... He sees Rasulullah sallallahu as he's talking to the man, he's got these two kids in his lap and he's kissing them and he's playing with them and the Bedouin man is getting irritated. He's getting irritated. And that's why to be irritated at the, at the love of Ahl Bayt is a sign of the Kuffar and the Mushrikeen and the Munafiqeen. To be irritated at the mention of the Ahl Bayt. Nowadays when you mention Ahl Bayt, you find always some people get irritated. Subhanallah. You don't, get, you don't get irritated when I talk and I praise your family. Why do you get irritated when I praise Rasul's family? <laughs> if I come to you and say, MashaAllah, Maulana, MashaAllah, Sheikh, your son is so beautiful, you'll be so happy. But when I come and tell you Rasulullah's son was so beautiful, you ask, you get irritated. When I come and tell you, MashaAllah, your daughter is so pious, you are so happy. I'll be happy. We'll all be happy. But when I come and give a khutbah and talk about Rasulullah's daughter, you get irritated. And I get ugly looks in the gathering and people come ask me after the khutbah, are you Shia? Are you... Hey, this is Rasulullah ki awlaad. They don't belong to Sunni or Shia. They, they are the family. They belong to Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa They are the leaders of Jannah. So we need to get over this phobia that we have. I call it Ahlul Bayt phobia. And some people, they spend the entire month of Muharram Defending the killers of Imam Hussain. Subhanallah. Bhai, you know, if somebody did something to my child, if you're not going to cry for him, at least don't defend those who killed him. At least don't defend those. If you're not going to cry for him and feel sad about him or give me condolences for him, the least you can do is shut your mouth up and not praise the ones who killed him. Takbir. Risala. Ya Rasulullah. Hussain, Hussain. Jannati, Jannati. Hussain, Hussain. Hussein, Hussein, Yazid, Yazid, Lanati, Lanati, Yazid, Yazid. Molana said, Lanati, may the curse of Allah be on Yazid. And one man was arguing with me the other day. So, you know, you mustn't say that. I said, Molana, not Molana Imran, he is the son of Hussein. 
But some other Maulana, and I said, he said, you mustn't say that. You mustn't curse Yazid, you know. I said, Maulana, if somebody cut, killed your son and chopped his head off and played football with it and took your daughters without their hijab in chains, will you not say, Lana? He said, I will make Lana Thamin on his whole, whole family. I said, Subhanallah, you love your family. We also love our family, but we love Rasulullah's family more. <laughs> and those who hurt Rasulullah's family, they give us more pain than those who hurt our own family. Subhanallah, the Ummah has become detached from the Ahl Bayt Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam and the first one to make lanat on the killers of the Ahl Bayt was our Nabi himself. Allah. Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal narrates in a hadith a sahih that the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said there are six people who Allah, his malaika and all angels send lanat on and I'm not going to go into all the six of that. And the one he mentioned, well, mustahillu min itrati ma haram Allah, and those who will abuse what Allah made haram about my children and my family, those who will abuse my family. Rasulullah sallallahu family, to badi baat, family is very big. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, hadith is in Tirmizi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, whoever scares the people of my city Medina, may the lanat of Allah, His Malaika, and all people be upon him. Man akhafa ahlul Medina. Hadith is sahih. Man akhafa. And by the way, Ilanati Yazid did that as well. After the battle of Karbala, when the people of Medina rose up against him, he sent his army and they killed 10,000 people in Medina. For three nights in the masjid of Rasulullah, there was no namaz, no salah. The soldiers of Yazid had tied their horses inside the masjid of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For three days there was no salah in Rasulullah's masjid. Even Abu Jahl and Abu Lahab couldn't achieve that. Allah. They came with their armies and they couldn't achieve that. That's why the Munafiq hurts Islam more than the Kafir. Abu Jahl and Abu Sufyan and Abu J whatever in Badr, Uhud, they came with their armies. In, in Khandaq, Abu Sufyan came with 10,000 soldiers to destroy Islam in Medina. They failed. And then they all accepted Islam afterwards. But here comes an army which is so-called Muslim. And for three days there was no salah in the masjid of our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There was one man only who used to perform the namaz, the salah in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa masjid. Sa'id bin al-Musayyib radiallahu an. The ulama here will know who he is. He is from the greatest of the tabi'een, from the people who met the sahaba. Sahaba are those who met the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Tabi'een are those who met the sahaba. He used to perform the salah five times a day in the masjid. They didn't kill him because when they asked somebody about him, they said he's a crazy man. So they said, oh, leave this old crazy man. He used to pray after the army of Yazid left Medina. They asked Saeed bin Musayyib. People asked him, they said, Hazrat Saeed, how did you know the times of salah? How did you know the waqt of salah? Those three days when you were the only one making namaz, 15 salahs you made in the masjid of the Nabi Haram of Medina. How did you know the time? Because you, he, was, he used to sit only in one place by the Rose Mubarak, by the maqam of our Nabi Sallallahu He wouldn't budge from there. He wouldn't move from there. Now that is inside the masjid under the roof, which means he can't see the sun. He can't come out and look at there. The soldiers won't. If you see you walking, they chop your head off. So they asked him, how did you know the waqt of salah? You're sitting in one place. There's no watches and calendars in those days. He said, Wallahi, I would know the waqt of salah by hearing the azan from the cover of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I would hear bi hamhamatin asma'uha hamhamatul azani min qabri Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When the time for salah comes, I hear the sound of azan from my Nabi's cover. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never gave azan in his own lifetime, physical lifetime. He never gave azan. Hadad Bilal used to give azan. But... This is what they did to Medina, that our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was forced to give azan from his cover because nobody in Medina was allowed to give azan in the masjid. And I mentioned this, I mentioned what happened in this incident. This is called the incident of Harra. The incident of Harra. You talk about Karbala, but 99% of people don't know about Harra. Harra happened after Karbala. Same army, same Yazid, his soldiers did that. Why I'm mentioning Harra, 10,000 people in Medina were killed. 1,000 women were raped. 
we talk about what's happening in our country today women getting raped and women getting abused and kidnapped and all these things that are happening may allah uh, bring rahma and relief to our land and get rid of the criminals 10 1000 women were raped in medina this is in tarikh tabari tarikh ibn kasir uh, all the books of uh, history mention this why i'm mentioning this and among the people killed were more than a hundred sahaba ikram including sahaba of the prophet why i mention this it's for you to understand why imam hussein had to stand up against those people when he went to stand up against them people didn't understand they said why you want to stand up against this person what his father appointed him khalas we should accept it he said you people do not understand the reality of this system that i'm standing against but soon you will realize who these evil people are and then what happened in Karbala and what happened in Harra made it apparent to the whole Ummah. If anybody had doubts, it became apparent to them why you had to stand up against that system. Because that is a system that does not respect the Nabi's house, nor does it respect Allah's house. And I literally say Allah's house because after Harra, after crushing the people of Medina and murdering the people of Medina, they went to Mecca. Because the people of Mecca also rose up against Yazid under the leadership of Hazrat Abdullah bin Az-Zubair radiallahu anhu, one of the Sahaba Ikram. Sahaba Ikram fought against Yazid and you defend Yazid and then you say you love the Sahaba. I don't understand those lovers of the Sahaba. They praise the one who killed the Sahaba. Then they say we love the Sahaba. At the same time, these contradictions, it is nothing but dushmani for Ahl Bayt. It's nothing but dislike for Ahl Bayt. Because these people you are defending, they killed the Sahaba Ikram. So, Hazrat Abdullah bin Zubair, Sahabi, whose father was a great Sahabi, cousin of our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Hazrat Zubair, his mother is Safiya bin Abdul Muttalib, Rasulullah's auntie. He rose up against Yazid, the people of Mecca, Karbala, Harra in Medina, and then Mecca. And the army of Yazid surrounded Mecca. And you know what they did? Haram of Allah, where you are not even allowed to kill a mosquito, mosquito that bites your skin. In the haram of Allah, even a mosquito, if it sits on your skin, you're supposed to chase it away, but you mustn't kill it. You're not even allowed to cut a tree or a plant in the holy city of Makkah in the haram of Allah. They cut the heads of the believers in Makkah. They threw fireballs. That time they didn't have a cannon. They threw fireballs, catapults. And these fireballs fell in Makkah. They destroyed the Kaaba of Allah. They put the Kaaba on fire. The holy Kaaba was hit by these cannonballs. And the Kaaba Sharif went on fire. I said, 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 Hazrat Abdullah ibn Zubair then had to rebuild the Kaaba. This is in history. Leave the history of Imam Hussein. Just read the history of the Kaaba, my brother. Get a book. You can go on Google. History of the Kaaba. Right? We're not going into Imam Hussein, Ahl Bayt. If you, you know, people get worried. History of the Kaaba. And check what you, what you read in the history of the Kaaba. I will mention to you in the year 62 of the Hijra, the army of Yazid ibn Muawiyah burned the holy Kaaba. And Abdullah ibn Zubair renovated it and built it again. This is our history, the history of the war between Haq and Batil. These are the people he had to stand up against. But I come back. The man comes, he sees Rasulullah carrying the two children and he's kissing them. And he looks and he says, Ya Muhammad, you know the Munafiks, they always address our Nabi وسلم, without any muhabbat, without any title, without any honor. Because they believe he's an ordinary man. Like our stag, they say, he's just like us. Now, how do you expect somebody who considers Rasulullah to be an ordinary man to think his children and his grandchildren were extraordinary people? If somebody has not understood maqam mustafa where will they understand maqam ali and maqam Fatima and maqam Hussain? They got to start first from there. <clears throat> he says, Ya Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I have 10 children. I have 10 children and you know what I've never kissed one of them once they had a very wrong understanding of masculinity 
of being a male which which was about uh, uh, you, it means you must have no love you must have no f mercy for anyone that is not malehood the greatest man male man rajul that ever lived was rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he was rahmatul lil alamin mercy for the world south africa needs to hear this message malehood being a male doesn't mean you can abuse women doesn't mean you can hurt women you can uh, get uh, you know mistreat women that's not the meaning of a man if you do that you are not a man you are not a man a real man doesn't hurt women a real man doesn't abuse women a real man looks after women looks after his wife looks after his children that is a real man if you don't do that you're not a man there's no difference between you and an animal that also walks around with the same body parts you have man but you know what subhanallah even the animals i ask them maaf because you know what even the animal male looks after his females i really don't know what you are then but rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam mercy the man looks at rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says ya muhammad i've got 10 sons i never kissed them once rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam looks at him and says oh man what can i do if allah has not put any rahmat in your heart what can i do if there is no rahma and mercy in your heart you got a heart of stone what can i do about that but they then he pointed imam hasan and hussein but they are my two beloved sons and they are my two flowers in this dunya and he kisses them again he kisses them again huma ibnaya wa rayhana tayya min hazihi dunya he says they are my two sons and they are my two fragrant flowers in this dunya not just flowers fragrant flowers rayhana Rayhana is not just a flower. Rayhana means a flower that gives off a nice smell. Now if they are Rasulullah's fragrant flowers, I just want to ask you, have you smelled that fragrance? Are we trying to smell that fragrance? These gatherings in Muharram are held so that we can also enjoy that fragrance that Rasulullah used to enjoy from them. There's flowers here. Flowers here, you always have a lot of flowers in, in the gathering of Imam Hassan and Hussein. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, they are my two fragrant flowers. I enjoy smelling them. He used to kiss them and smell them. May we all be smelling their fragrance. Amen. That is the muhabbat of the ahl bayt He said, they are my two sons and they are my two beloveds. Man ahabbahuma faqad ahabbani. Whoever loves them, loves me. وَمَنْ آزَاهُمَا فَقَدْ وَمَنْ أَبْغَضَهُمَا فَقَدْ أَبْغَضَنِي And whoever hates them, hates me. وَمَنْ آزَاهُمَا فَقَدْ آزَانِي And whoever hurts them, hurts me. In Karbala, they did not only hurt Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, grandchildren and great-grandchildren, they hurt Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Sayyiduna ibn Abbas, radhi Allahu an, Imam Tirmizi narrates that Imam... Tirmizi narrates that Sayyidina Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, the great Sahabi, cousin of our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was alive at the time of Karbala. And he had gone blind by that time. He couldn't see. He was a very old man by that time. But his only his eyes were blind. His heart was still alive. Because that night he saw Rasulullah sallallahu in a dream. Many people have eyes that work, but their heart is dead and they will never see Rasulullah. Hazrat Ibn Abbas, by that time his eyesight had gone, but his heart was alive. And he had a vision of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It was after, uh, it was on the day of the 10th of Muharram. He was taking a rest after Salatul Dhuhr, the Qaylula. You know, you rest after Salatul Dhuhr, that's the Sunnah. And he saw our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a dream. And when he saw him, Kana Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ash'asan akhbaran. He saw the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam full of dust full of dust you know you know when somebody comes and they're full of dust their clothes their beard their hair and he was looking worried and he was looking sad and ibn abbas says wallahi i never saw the nabi like that in my life i've never seen him like that and i said ya rasul allah what happened he said i just witnessed the murder of my son hussein in karbala i was there i saw it i just witnessed it People say, why do you talk about Karbala? Rasulullah attended Karbala. He saw what happened in Karbala. So brothers and sisters in Islam, the love of Rasulullah family is a sign of Iman. Hatred of them is a sign of Nifaq. 
holding on to them is your pathway to Jannah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Al Hassan wal Hussein, Sayyida Shababi Ahlil Jannah. Hassan and Hussein are the they are not just Jannati, they are not just people of Jannah. He said they are the leaders of all the people of Jannah. They are the leaders of all the Jannatis. Jannati to wohe jo unka naam le. Just by mentioning their name, you will become Jannati. Because Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, a general hadith and a specific hadith. I'll mention the general one first. A man comes say, Ya Rasulullah, when is the day of Qiyamah? Hadith is in Bukhari, Sahih Hadith. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, you ask about Qiyamah, dear brother in Islam, when? What have you prepared for it? What have you prepared? People say, when is Qiyamah? When is Imam Mahdi coming? When is... So what have you prepared for it? What have you prepared with Hikmah? So the man says, Ya Rasulullah, I have not prepared a lot of Salah and Saum, not of Namaz and Roza. I, I, I haven't made a lot of prayers and a lot of fasts. I'm an ordinary man. But, Inni Allah wa Rasulah. I love Allah and His Messenger. I have Muhabba in my heart, love in my heart for Allah and His Rasul. I love Allah and I love you, Ya Rasulullah. So what did the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said? He said, then, isn't al-mar'u ma'am al-nahab wa anta ma'am nahbab ta yawm al-qiyamah. He said, then, on the day of qiyamah, a man will be with the ones he loves. And you will be with the ones you love. So, we will be with the ones we love. If you love the Husseinis, you will be with them on qiyamah. If you love the Yazidis, you will be with them on qiyamah. So we will love the right people. That is a general hadith. You will be on the day of Qiyamah and after that with the ones you love. Be careful. And that's my message to the youth. My message to everyone. Be careful of who you love. Be careful of who you have love for. Because you're going to be with them on the day of Qiyamah. That's a general hadith. But I mention a specific hadith as well. One day our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the night time, he hears the, the sounds of the children, Hassan and Hussein, and he wakes up, or he was up, he heard them, and he went in the house, in the room, and he saw that Hussein was asking for water. Hussein was asking for water. He said, I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty. They didn't have today like fridges and taps, and you know, the water is everywhere. You had a little uh, jug of water somewhere there, and it's usually finished. In the morning, you must go fetch from the well. So he said, there was no water in their home. So he said, I'm looking for, I'm thirsty, Nana, Nana, I'm thirsty, Ya Jadda. Atshan, Ya Jadda, I'm thirsty, my grandfather. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then immediately got up, he went and he had some water in his room. He took the little bit that was there and he went to Hussein. And then when he went there, Hassan had also come now, the elder brother, Hassan and Hussein. The elder one came and then the mother also came. Fatima, she was of Sayyidah Fatima Zahra alayhi salam. Wa ma'adraka ma Fatima. Hiya ummu man, hiya bintu man, hiya zawju man. Man fil ula yudaniha. Fatima to Zahra. She was also there. She was the daughter of who? She was the wife of who? She was the mother of who? Who had a mother like her mother Khadija? Who had a father like her father Rasulullah? Who had a husband like her husband Ali? Who had a son like her son Hassan and Hussein? That is Fatima to Zahra. But we will leave that for another day. But she comes and then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gives the water to Hussein first. When he gives it to Hussein, now Hassan is also asking. So Sayyida Fatima says, Dear father, Ya Baba, Baba, do you love Hussein more than Hassan? Because Hassan was now in the front asking, why did you give Hussein first? But the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it is not that my dear daughter, I love them all equally. But he asked first. He asked first, so I gave it to him. And the ulama say, there was the ishara in that, into how Imam Hussein and his family will be thirsty on the day of Karbala. And Rasulullah will be the one who will give them water in Jannah. Allah, Allah. They died thirsty. You know why they died thirsty? Because they no more were deserving, or the water of this world was no more deserving of them. Allah was looking at them, and Rasulullah was saying, said, today your water will be from Nahre Kawsar. Will be from Hawze Kawsar. And this is not exaggeration, it is a true story. And I will come to that. But Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave the water to Imam Hussain and he drank and then he gave to Imam Hassan, he drank. And then Sayyidah Fatima looked sad 
that, you know, my children want water and there's not even water in the house. They lived a very difficult life. They lived a very simple life away from the dunya and its desires. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at her and he said, my beloved daughter, don't worry. Don't worry about the dunya. You know, we are human. We worry about if you see your children hungry and thirsty, you worry. It's natural. He said, my beloved daughter, don't worry about this dunya. This dunya is not for the family of Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My beloved daughter, but I tell you something. You, me, these two children and their father that's sleeping here. And he pointed to Ali. He said, me, you, these two boys and their father that's sleeping here. And whoever loves us will be together in Jannatul Firdaus in the highest maqam. Fi maqam in wahid in yawm al qiyamah. Fil jannah. The highest maqam in Jannah is what? The level, the rank of our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is the highest place in Jannah. There's nothing higher than that. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to Bibi Fatima and Sayyidina Hassan and Hussein and Sayyidina Ali, you all will be with me like you are with me in my room now. My room, your room is all next to each other. You will be my, my maqam in Jannah. And then he added, and whoever loves you will be with us as well. If you want to get just to Jannah, then fine, you make your namaz, your salah, come to the masjid five times a day, uh, read your Quran, read your zikrs, uh, do your ibadat, give your sadaqah, and inshallah you will make it to Jannah. These are the actions that lead you to Jannah. But if you want to be in the highest maqam in Jannah with Rasulullah, then love the Ahlul Bayt. Then love the Ahlul Bayt, you will be there. Brother and sister in Islam, one can talk on and on about the Ahlul Bayt and their sacrifices for Islam. Imam Hussein stood up for the haqq. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Sayyidu al-Shuhada and Allah rajulun qama ila sultanin jairin faqatalahu. He said, the greatest shaheed, shaheed azam the greatest shaheed in my ummah is one who stands up to a tyrant ruler and then he is martyred by him. That is the maqam of Imam Hussein. And our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said, when you see something wrong happening, we all know the hadith, man ra minkum munkaran. If you see something wrong, there are three levels of changing it. If you can change it with your hand, change it with your hand. If you can't change it with your hand, the wrong deed that's happening, at least condemn it with your mouth. Open your mouth and say, this is wrong. And then he says, wa in lam tastati' fa bi qalbik. And if you can't even open your mouth against the wrong deed, then at least in your heart, condemn it. At least you keep quiet but in your heart you, you look at it and you say this is wrong what's happening. But you keep your mouth shut. Then the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says وَذَلِكَ أَضَعْفُ iman, And that is the weakest of Iman. So Iman has the highest level which is to stand up to the wrong physically. With, try, try to change it with your hand. Iman has a middle level. You don't stand up to evil with your hand but you condemn it with your mouth. And then Iman has the weakest level. You sit in your home and you condemn it in your heart, but you don't speak up. When Imam Hussein stood up against Yazid, that time he displayed the greatest of Iman. People come and say, you know what, Maulana, you know, there were other people who told him, don't go. Hadrat Umar's son said to him, don't go. I said, remember, this is Rasulullah's son, huh? Everybody, else, we love Hadrat Umar's son, Hadrat Abu Bakr's son, even their great, great grandsons are beloved to us because we respect them as a great Sahaba of our Nabi Sallallahu but do not compare anybody's son to Rasulullah's son. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, Hazrat Umar's son came and said, Hazrat Ibn Umar said, don't go. I said, Mashallah, that was his opinion. Hazrat Ibn Umar didn't want him to be martyred. That was his love for ahl bayt Somebody, uh, Hazrat Ibn Abbas said, don't go. I said, brothers, I mentioned to you the hadith of the three levels. There were people who felt at that time that, Ya Hussein, you should do what we are doing. Condemn it in the heart. We all know this man is evil. We don't love this man. We all know he's evil. But let's do it in the heart. Or maybe let's speak up against him with the mouth. Now that was the level of the sons of other people. That was the level of the masses at that time. But the level of Rasulullah's son is the highest of Iman. You cannot expect Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam's son to display the weakest of Iman. Imam Hussein could have listened to the people who told them don't go. He could have sat in his house and in front of his family he could have condemned Yazid night and day. He could have, in his heart he could have done that. But that is the weakest of Iman. 
Hussein is not the weakest of Iman. Hussein is Jane Iman. Hussein is the highest of Iman. By doing what is the highest of Iman, to stand up to the evil man, Imam Hussein saved Islam. Because if he also had not to stand up that day, if everybody had to just keep quiet, it would have mean the entire Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has accepted to live at the lowest of Iman. The entire Ummah has accepted to live at the lowest of Iman. Somebody had to display the highest of Iman. It was Hussein ibn Ali wa Zahra. Rasulullah son had to do it. That's why they said, but you know what? You, you, you might lose the battle. You might not win. He said, if the Ummah will not wake up through my life, then maybe they will wake up with my death. And in la yaslahu amru umma tajaddi illa bi qatli fabiha. If, my, if the Ummah of my grandfather will only wake up by me becoming Shaheed, then let my blood be spilt for the sake of saving the deen of my father, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So brothers and sisters, to conclude, Imam Hussein's maqam and status in Islam is not only because he is Rasulullah sallallahu grandson and when he was born, Rasulullah gave the azan in his ears and Rasulullah sallallahu gave his name and Rasulullah used to carry him in his lap. It's not only because of that. That is where our love for him starts. But he was not only somebody who bragged about being a grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He lived the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He walked the walk of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in the end of his life, he gave his life to save the deen of his grandfather Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was a true son of our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by blood and by spirit. One cannot say in blood he was Rasulullah's son, but in character, you know, he was, uh, you know, many ulama, great sheikhs today, but their children are not like them. One cannot say about Imam Hassan and Hussein, they were Rasulullah's children by blood, but in character they weren't like him. Wallahi, the Sahaba used to say, other people, you want to know, if you want to know how Rasulullah was, do you want to know how Nabi Sallallahu was? Just look at Hassan and Hussein. They live his life and they walk his walk and they talk his talk. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the souls of Imam Hussein and the shuhada of Karbala and his parents, Mawla Ali and Sayyida Fatima. When his eldest son, I finish with this, his eldest son, Imam Ali Akbar, Imam Hussein's eldest son was 18 years old. When he was, he was martyred in Karbala, when he was dying, Imam Hussein held him, he said, my son, recite the kalima and he, he's in his last minute and his son looked at him and he started smiling and said, my father, I can see our grandfather Rasulullah smiling and saying, I welcome you and I wait for your father Hussein. I welcome you and I wait for your father Hussein. I want to thank at the conclusion of this talk, CTIEC, this masjid, this Darul Uloob, the organizer of this, of this function, the known people and the unknown ones for upholding the memory of the Ahlul Bayt. Wallahi, there is nothing you can do that can bring so much happiness to Rasulullah's heart that we have not forgotten what people did to his children. Are, you kiss the black stone in Makkah because Rasulullah kissed it. Somebody said, Kya ajeeb ummat hai Somebody said, what kind of a strange ummah is this? They kissed the black stone because Rasulullah kissed it, but they cut off the head that Rasulullah used to kiss every day. <laughs> they kissed the black stone that Rasulullah kissed once in his hajj, and they cut off the head of Hussein that he used to kiss every day. So I thank you for upholding this program and I'm very happy to see the women. For many reasons, firstly, they have all right to the knowledge of the deen like any other, like the men, but more so because on the Maidan of Karbala, Imam Hussein had his women with him as well. He took his sister Sayyida Zainab, the daughter of Fatima. He took his daughter Sayyida Fatima bint al-Hussein, Sukaina bint al-Hussein. He took his nieces, he had taken his sisters, or any nieces and daughters he had brought the women in Karbala. Why did he bring the women to Karbala? Because he knew that him and his entire family will be martyred. But the women will live to narrate the story of Karbala. Do you know that today, by and large, we know the story of Karbala from the women that were present that day. Because the men were all killed. It was the women. There were some men who narrated whatever. But it was the women who were in Karbala. They went home and they said, they told the Ummah what happened that day. So today I also advise the women, go home and tell your children about Imam Hussein. Today your children say, my hero is Ben 10 and Batman and Spider-Man and 
tell your children your, your hero should be Imam Hussein, should be Imam Ali, should be Usama bin Zayed, should be all these great Sahaba Ahl Bayt, they, they, should, they should be your heroes. So I'm very happy to see our sisters. Jazakallahu khairan. May Allah bless you all and may Allah grant us an increase in the love of the Ahl Bayt. Shah Hasta Hussein, Shahin Shah Hasta Hussein, Di Hasta Hussein, Di Pana Hasta Hussein, Sardat Nada Dust, Dar Dust Yazid, Hakka Ke Binae, La Ila Hasta Hussein, Wasallallahu Ala Sayyidina Muhammadin, Walihi Wasabi.